What does that even mean, Bowers Game? Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review and a special Kickstarter review. And today I'm very excited to check it out When I Dream from Draw Lab Entertainment. This is for 4 to 10 players. It'll take you about 20 to 40 minutes to play, and it's for ages 8 plus. And in When I Dream, you are going to be taking turns going to sleep. Ah, oh, and having a lovely dream. And while you're dreaming, there's going to be a card flipped over on the table, and people at the table are either going to be trying to help you guess what words are on the card, or trick you into not guessing what words are on the card. And there's also some other people who are trying to keep the balances of power equal. What in the world am I talking about? Let's open it up, and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of When I Dream. So before we get started, I do want to mention this is the promotional copy I have in front of me, so take everything you see here with a grain of salt. Components might change by the time they get to you. So in When I Dream, you're going to be taking turns going around the circle, being someone who is having a dream. So when it's your turn to dream, you're going to put on this blindfold. Once you get the blindfold on, everyone is going to get one of these cards right here. They're going to be assigned a role. They will either be on the good team, they will be on the bad team, or they will be a trickster. The good team is going to be trying to help the person with the blindfold guess a word that is on this card right here. I'll show you these cards in a little bit. The bad team is going to be trying to say words that will confuse the person with the blindfold to guessing the wrong answer for what is on the card. And the trickster is going to be trying to keep everything balanced. They want the person with the blindfold on to guess the same amount of correct ones as they get wrong ones. So they're going to be switching mid-round between giving good clues and giving bad clues, which is really an interesting roll. Now I mentioned these cards right here. Let's go ahead and show them to you because they are absolutely gorgeous. They're going to have two words on them. So shell, carpet, uh, rooftop, farmer, desk, superhero, let's see, squirrel, sculptor, so on and so forth. So you're going to have two words on there and you're going to be trying to get the, uh, the person that is dreaming to guess one of those words if you're on the good team. So once everybody's looked at their roles, what's going to happen is you're going to set the sand, you're going to set the timer for two minutes, and then you're going to flip over the top card. And starting with the player to the let's see left of the person with the dreamer, they are going to give one word and only one word clues to try and either trick the dreamer or help them guess what word that is. So for instance, we have crib and spaceship. So you might say baby, you might say um, wooden, you might say uh, you know manger you might say ufo you might say a number of variety of different things but you're trying to work together as the blue team to try and get them to guess crib or spaceship whereas you're trying to throw them off if you are the red team now how this works is you can only say one word on your turn and if you're on the bad guys sometimes you can be blatantly bad or sometimes you can be just a little bit bad and i have a perfect example actually for you i think i forgot to mention this pros and cons but this is one of my favorite aspects of the game so squirrel was the clue that came up and it was going around the table, I was on the bad team, and it was like, climb, nut. Um, and someone said, I, yeah, I think climb and nut, and there was another clue that would have led to him saying squirrel. So what I said was Alvin, and that person ended up guessing chipmunk. So I was pretty close, because squirrel and chipmunks are like in the same family, but... Uh, I really threw him off, and so I gained myself one point. Now, as soon as they guess either correctly or incorrectly, so let's just say this person gets spaceship. You would put it under this pile, but you do not tell that person whether they were correct or incorrect, and then you immediately flip over another card and return. So let's just say this one's cheetah, and they guessed lion. So now, boom. It would be even. So the trickster would be very happy at this point. But you're going to continue to do this until two minutes is up. So let's just say this is the layout right here. This is what end up, ends up happening. So once the two-minute timer has gone off, the person with the blindfold is going to keep the blindfold on. And they are going to try and weave together a story about their dream using all the correct words that they said. However, they do not know what the correct words are. So they're going to be trying to rack their brain to remember all all the words they said and weave together a story. If they're able to successfully do that, they will gain one point. It's not a huge memory game, but it is still one point each turn. Next, he'll flip off his blindfold, see which ones he got correct and incorrect, and the scoring will work as such. If you're on the blue team for this instance, you would get three points. If you're on the red team, you would get two points. Now the trickster is going to try and keep it even as I mentioned. And essentially how this works is, 
If it's not even, they will get the lowest total, and if it is even, they will get the highest total, but only if it's massively uneven. So if this were, say, like this, they would get one point instead of getting the three points. So anywho, once you've collected your point crystals right there, you are going to collect all of these cards right here because you'll be switching roles each turn. You're going to pass the blindfold to the player on the left, and you're going to play until Every person has, has a chance as being the person with the blindfold, at which point you will tally up the points, whoever is the most, with the winner of When I Dream. And then, in a nutshell, it's not the game. Alrighty then, When I Dream from Draw Lab Entertainment. Coming to a Kickstarter near you very, very soon. Be sure to post that Kickstarter link down below. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros. Let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, four to ten players. So you're going to need a slightly larger group to play this. And I feel like it excels at the higher player count. Not that it's bad at four. Also, some people are going to be weirded out by sharing this because you have to put it over your eyes. And then everybody else is going to put it over their eyes. And you might have the sweaty guy who smells like cheese. And yeah... But really, that's the nature of the beast. I guess you could close your eyes if you want to do an honor system, but still, some people are going to be turned off by that. Now, huge con that I have that should not be a con for you, but something I absolutely want to mention is that I have, I think, about 30 or 40 cards, which is not enough cards. Now, the rules sheet says there's going to be, I think, 120 or 160, which I think it's 160, which would fix this problem exponentially. But I can only recommend this game if there is a lot of cards in there. So take that for what you will, at least 100 at a bare minimum. So that is one thing that I did want to mention. Uh, any other cons I have with the game? When you're first starting it, you're going to be a little bit confused. It's just, it's got a slightly weird learning curve. It's a simple game, but you're like, what are we doing? And then it's going to click about the second or third round and be like, oh, I see what we're doing. But the rounds go by so quick that it is not a big deal. Any other cons I have with the game? No. Moving on to the pros, when I dream... I tell you, I tell you guys this brutally honest. There's been a couple times that I've mentioned this. Good cop, bad cop. I did it for Scythe. But for a couple other games, this is one of the best Kickstarter games that I have ever gotten. I love this game. You should back this game. Period. If you like party games. I think that's a very important one there. So, when I dream, why am I so gaga about this game? First and foremost, this is a very original unique completely out there concept that works it works so well why does it work well it works well because of the tricksters i love the tricksters in this game so if you're good you want to help them guess it right if you're bad you want to help guess them wrong and if you're a trickster then you are going to be constantly changing depending on which side is winning and I love that aspect because when you're blindfolded, you can start to pick out and be like, all right, I feel like that person's starting to screw with me. That person is trying to mess me up. But if it's a trickster, then the next time they might be trying to help you out. And then you're like, wait, but he gave me really bad clues. See the trickster or see the bad guy, but it's in two minutes. So there's like, you're, you're, you're worried about the time. I also like the memory aspect of this game. Now, some people do not like memory aspects in games. And I will mention that. And if you don't like memory aspects in this game, you might not like that. But honestly, at most, it is going to uh, impact one point per turn. So it's not a huge thing at all. Memory is not the primary aspect of this game. But I love that storytelling aspect of the game where after you're done, you have to try and weave together a story using all the words that you have heard or that you have said that are correct. And here's the thing. You don't know which words are correct. So if you did like five words that round, even if four of them were wrong, you're like stretching your brain trying to remember what all five of those words are when in essence, you might only need to remember one. I like that aspect an awful lot. Uh, the artwork. Oh yeah, let's talk about the artwork. I'm not really a big art guy. You know, if you watch my channel routinely, artwork is one of the things that I care the least about. But the artwork in this game is out. Standing. It is absolutely excellent, fantastic. I would say it is it's Dixit level-ish. I honestly like this artwork comparable or better than I like the artwork in Dixit. It is that nice. So I think most people are going to think that Dixit's a little bit nicer, but still, if people are saying your, your artwork is almost as nice as Dixit, that's about the ultimate compliment you can get for artwork. And I really like the humor in the cards too. Like there will be times, many times, where you flip over a card, everyone looks at it, and then you all chuckle at about the same time because the cards are humorous. They combine both of the words together. Oh, one more con I forgot to mention. Some of the words are a little bit more tricky than I would like them to be. And uh, hopefully that gets fixed before the end. Like there's a word like rooftop. And we were thinking about it. It's like, how could you possibly discern rooftop from the word 
roof and yeah but that's a minor nitpick so what else i liked about the game is the fact that there's two words on each card and that makes it really interesting because you can try and look good by saying something completely off the topic. Like, might, maybe you're getting close to them guessing the word crab or lobster or something like that. Then you might look at the bottom card, and it might be desk, and you might say office or chair or something like that. Um, I just like this game an awful lot. I, you know what, I love this game an awful lot. When I dream, I don't give Bowers Best Seals to Kickstarters. I decided right from the get-go I don't do that. But honestly, once this gets released, if it has more cards, this is going to get a Bowers Best Seal on it. That's how much I like this game. It's an outstanding party game. It's an outstanding gateway game. It's an outstanding drinking and socializing kind of game. It is a lot of fun. When I dream, check this one out. Completely different, completely out there, and it completely works. When I dream from Draw Lab Entertainment, be sure to check out that Kickstarter link down below. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below and in the comments below. Let me know what was the last dream that you remember having for me personally oh i never remember my dreams because when i wake up it's just like bam i wake up and within 40 seconds i am in the shower which i guess screws up your dreaming or something like that so the last dream i remember i think i was i think i was like an assassin i was an assassin and i was like a rat sized assassin so i was like a, a small guy and i was trying to kill a giant i don't remember crazy dream though but what was the last dream that you remember if you remember your dreams and as always thanks for your time youtube